Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out the new Chromecast today. They've updated the product a little bit. Still costs the same at $35 and if you're not familiar with a Chromecast, uh, what these are are very inexpensive video playback devices that work uh, with your existing apps that you might be using to watch video. So Netflix and YouTube and HBO Go and Plex, most of the uh, very popular video apps out there support these Chromecasts and when the app detects one of these on your network, you're going to see a little button show up on your phone. Uh, you push that button and then anything you want to play back uh, comes over to your television via this little device. It is really cool uh, how well and how simple these things work and that's what keeps the price down. So what they've done uh, is they've gone from this stick design to uh, this little circular design that kind of dangles off the end of a cable here and that was done to improve its Wi-Fi connectivity. So uh, the old one was also uh, connecting via Wi-Fi and because it was in a stick form factor uh, sometimes the television might have blocked uh, the Wi-Fi signal especially when it was farther away from the wireless access point and a lot of folks also had trouble trying to trying to get it kind of wedged into their TV uh, just given its stick like design. So what they've done is uh, put all the electronics out in this little disc thing here and then put in a very flexible cable that's permanently attached to the disc portion uh, so now you can get a better angle at plugging it in and also because you can have it hang optionally uh, from your television like that you might get a better wireless signal. They also updated the wireless technology on here too so this now supports wireless AC in both the 5 and 2.5 four gigahertz bands. Uh, you can check out my video linked above which details what uh, all those signal bands mean and what wireless AC is all about too so you can get a feel for what this new wireless technology is about but it's faster and more reliable and this device now supports that uh, wireless uh, tech and uh, it's got three antennas now too so this larger form factor gives it uh, more room for different antennas and the device will kind of smartly try to figure out where the signal is coming from and how to best tune into that signal. Uh, so it connects to your TV via HDMI just like the old one did and just like the old one too it needs power and many smart televisions have a USB port on them so you can plug in uh, the USB cable that comes with it. It's actually rather long too so if you don't have enough uh, room or concerned about not having enough room you'll have plenty of length on this cable. Uh, if your TV cannot supply enough power or doesn't have the USB uh, connector on it uh, you can plug it into an AC adapter that they also give you in the box so uh, pretty easy to get up and running once uh, everything is connected. Uh, so there really isn't though anything new beyond what I just described from the new one uh, back to the old one so they're they're pretty much going to perform about the same. The new one does have a little fast start feature now that will try to predict what you're about to watch and uh, cue it up in the background so when you hit the button it just kind of pops up right away so it'll save you maybe uh, 10 or 15 seconds here or there uh, over the old one but that's really the biggest feature jump beyond uh, the overall industrial design and the wireless bump so if you're happy with the way this one works uh, you'll, you won't get anything really all that new on this one beyond the faster starts. Now we're going to do though is plug it in and I'm going to show you how it works with a few different apps and we'll kind of cover some of its main features. So let's get this thing hooked up. All right, so to get this thing up and running, all you got to do is just plug it into your HDMI port on your television like so. And if you don't like it kind of dangling like, like this, there is a magnet on the back of the cable here. And when you connect uh, the Chromecast to that magnet, it will stay put. Although on this television, this isn't going to work because the USB port is here. And when we're on the magnet, uh, we are blocking the port uh, by the side of the TV here. So every television is going to be a little bit different. So you want to maybe take a look at how your TV is configured and decide whether or not you can live with it dangling like this. Uh, you could also buy an HDMI extension cable to kind of move everything out of the way if you uh, need to do that too. So you do have uh, to think about a couple of things when you're planning this out. But uh, the nice thing is my TV does have a USB port on it. So that will, in this uh, instance, power the Chromecast. I don't need to use that uh, AC adapter there. So we'll wait for the Chromecast to boot up. Uh, what I am going to do in the interim here is just pop open my uh, YouTube app on my Android phone here. This will work the same on iPhone too. So you'll be seeing pretty much the same functionality. And within these apps that support the Chromecast, you're going to get a new icon up here, a little casting icon. I'm going to tap on that and what will happen is it'll ask me which device to connect to. I'm going to pick our new Chromecast here and you'll see now the YouTube app is loading up and what I can do is just uh, tap on uh, any of my videos here and it will give me the option to play it and I'll just click that and it'll put the, uh, the little thumbnail up on my phone but it'll very quickly get started up here on the Chromecast playing on my television. And what's cool too is that I can uh, queue up other videos on my phone while I'm watching something on TV. So if I wanted to watch uh, the Gaming Historians video here I can just tap that 
uh, go to add to queue and what will happen is after this video ends uh, YouTube will start the next one automatically so you can see I've got the uh, one we're watching right now on this TiVo thing and then the history of LJN uh, will start after that and you can uh, you know kind of move the order around of things also if you want to do that you just want to be careful though because I just did this tonight uh, there is an option to delete if you're watching one of your own videos on your Chromecast. That doesn't take it out of the queue. That deletes it from YouTube. I can't believe how easy they make this to delete videos. I actually lost one of my videos tonight. I re-uploaded it, but I lost one of my videos that had 6,000 views almost uh, by hitting the wrong button. So there is a remove from queue option, uh, which will take it out of queue, and that will then go to the next one on the queue, as you can see right there. So that is how uh, it works in YouTube. Uh, there are other apps, too, that are working with this. We're going to check out Plex next because... Uh, that is something that's very popular with folks and it's a great way to get Plex onto your TV without having to buy a set-top box or an Android device or something like that. We're still playing back some YouTube here, but I'm going to tap on Plex and Plex will load up and I will now get that same icon we saw before on my Plex app. And I'll go ahead and just uh, select our new Chromecast here. It will then uh, kill the YouTube connection and now we'll see Plex starting up here and it's saying we're ready to cast. So I'm going to select my um, wizard movie here. You all might remember that one, a nice uh, long Nintendo commercial. And I can resume that from the phone. It'll start playing on uh, my, uh, my, my Chromecast here. It does take a little bit longer for this one to queue up versus the YouTube because I don't think Plex uh, yet supports at the time that I'm recording this video uh, that fast queue up feature that I talked about earlier. Now just casting video is not all this does. In fact, there are some neat features even with screen mirroring. Now this is a feature that's going to be unique to Android uh, on its own. So uh, what we're going to do here is just go over to cast screen by pulling down our uh, menu there. Most of the newer Android phones will support this and we'll go over to our new Chromecast and uh, you'll see now that my screen is being mirrored on uh, my television. Now this again, this is not going to work on iOS, but it will work uh, on Android. And I'm actually surprised that the latency on here is really not that bad at all. I'm really impressed with uh, how fast things tend to uh, respond on screen. I can go uh, landscape on it also, as you can see, and it seems to keep up uh, pretty quickly here, which was neat to see. There's also a library of games developing on this platform too, where you're you know, casting from an iOS or an Android device uh, to a television. This is one called uh, Alien Invaders, and I'll show you how this works real quick. Uh, not the best game in the world, but it's kind of a neat proof of concept that uh, you can have this uh, two-screen experience here and very low latency. In fact, this is really uh, running quite nicely considering uh, how far my Wi-Fi access point is away from here. I think there is some direct connection stuff going on uh, to kind of speed up this latency uh, issue that sometimes arises when you're doing this screencasting kind of thing. So again, this is not the best game in the world, but uh, this does give you an idea as to what some of the possibilities might be uh, just given how low the latency is when you're connecting to here. Uh, there's a bunch of other games that are like trivia games and things that don't really depend on a uh, really tight latency that are kind of fun to play too. There's a Wheel of Fortune version and a few other things out there like that too. But you can also uh, extend your desktop computer running Chrome over to this also, which is useful actually for a lot of those uh, TV uh, uh, network websites that don't have a way to get their video content streamed on anything but a computer. This is actually one great way to do that. So let's see how that works. So on the Google Chrome store, there is an extension called Google Cast, and we'll put that very familiar icon that we've been seeing now in all of our apps that support uh, the Chromecast on your web browser. And if you click on uh, the Chromecast you want to cast your window to, it'll put that tab that you're looking at uh, onto your television screen, and you can adjust the size of it. It sometimes gets a little messed up when you start uh, doing things like this to try to make the uh, window bigger on screen. So if it does kind of get a little wacky, you can just disconnect and then reconnect, and you'll be uh, pretty much back where you were before. Uh, what's also cool is that if you go over to YouTube, for example, uh, it will detect that you're going on YouTube, and it'll uh, go right back to that YouTube uh, application that we saw earlier. So uh, if I go and click on a video here to play it, with hopefully without deleting it this time, uh, that video will queue up in the very same way that it works on the mobile app. So you see here I have the option to play it now or add it to my TV queue like I did before. And when I click on play it now, it is now going to run that video on the Chromecast full screen uh, directly to it uh, versus running from the computer over to the Chromecast that way. So it works very much like the, uh, the mobile apps do, uh, but it's on your uh, web browser, which I thought was a neat thing. Now I'm going to switch over here to The Daily Show real quick because this is one of those uh, web-based uh, things that you might want to watch on one of these devices. And what you can do is just uh, change tabs and then go to cast this tab. And what that will do is pull up 
uh, The Daily Show. I can click Watch Now, and uh, that will actually play uh, in line. And while well, I'm not going to play the audio now for copyright reasons, uh, the audio syncs up perfectly. So you're able to actually watch the video on your television screen, even going full screen with it if you want. Uh, and maybe get around some limitations with you know, TV networks that don't support streaming uh, on anything other than a web browser. This is one way to kind of get around that issue, which is a pretty neat thing. So one last thing to check out is some of the changes they're making with the Chromecast app on uh, Android and on iOS. And what's nice about what they're doing here is they're making the Chromecast app more than just a configuration utility. Uh, they're turning it into a bit of an aggregator for content and apps. So let's check that out real quick. So now when you boot up the Chromecast app, you will see uh, some aggregated content here. So they'll look at what you have installed on your device and make some recommendations based on uh, some of their editorial picks. But you can also do a search. So for example, if I wanted to see when Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood is on next for my daughter, uh, I'll type in Daniel Tiger here and do a quick search. And what that will do is pull up the show and then it'll show me where it's available to watch it on. Now the one thing that I did notice though is that it doesn't include all services. So the PBS Kids app uh, does support Google Chromecast. However, uh, it's not being listed as one of the places where I can watch this show. So it's not complete in that they're not going to give you every service, but it does uh, attempt to aggregate where you can watch some of your favorite shows uh, in one spot there. So kind of a neat thing. They've gone beyond uh, just making this an app to configure the device and actually making it something where you can find content to play. Now if I click on something on here, for example, if I wanted to watch uh, the uh, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood on Netflix. If I tap on Watch, what that will do is actually launch the Netflix app, which I can then use uh, to cast the episode over to uh, my device there. So I have to say, this is a, a nice little improvement on the Chromecast, but there really aren't any new features that uh, we didn't have on the prior one. It's going to run a little bit faster. You saw when I played back the YouTube video, it did kind of spring up really quickly. Uh, that's pretty much the only big difference between uh, this one and this one is that uh, you'll get a little bit faster playback performance on apps that support that. Uh, but again, if you're happy with this one, every feature I just demonstrated is still working uh, on the old one. Uh, the new one is this kind of an improved uh, overall industrial design and better wireless. So if you were having issues getting this one to connect properly, uh, this new one should work better. Uh, they both cost the same. So if you're in the market, I would just get the new one. It's, you know, it's the same price uh, and it will give you a little bit better wireless functionality. If I missed anything or the things you want to see, I'll leave them in the comments below and we'll cover them in a follow-up video. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.